What do you make of the latest offer, Brooke? I thought it was very interesting in a couple of respects. They clearly are trying to respond from what we saw from Frontier last week, where Frontier actually added a reverse termination fee to its offer that would pay out in the event that antitrust regulators blocked that deal. JetBlue is now offering $350 million in a reverse termination fee. And as you said, a portion of that will be paid up front. What I think is interesting is there's maybe some different definitions about what upfront means. Remember that JetBlue did participate in the CARES Act, uh, the loan portion portion of that financial aid program during the pandemic. There are conditions tied to that that have to do with share repurchases and dividends. Uh, so there was an interesting footnote in the press release that that payment is tied to CARES Act limitations, and we'll have to get more information from JetBlue about exactly what that means. I also thought it was very interesting that nowhere in the press release was a mention of that $33 a share initial offer that JetBlue made for Spirit. If you recall, in their last update, they said that was still on the table pending due diligence. Now, it's not clear to me if that is still the case uh, or if they are now taking that off of the table, but I thought it was very notable that that number was not in the press release. And so I think if you are a Spirit shareholder, you have a lot to think about right now uh, in terms of not just regulatory risk, yeah. but how do you feel about the financial gap between these two offers? Well, Brooke, it's such a good point. That was my question. Is it where are shareholders lining up for? Because Frontier always also has the option of trying to increase cash in their bid and not just make it stock. Um, they haven't really done that yet. So uh, I wonder sort of if shareholders are going to put the pressure on Frontier or Spirit. Or they could increase the stock portion. I mean, one interesting thing about this is that Spirit has been very clear that they view the stock portion as very attractive. That's something that Glass Lewis highlighted as well. These airlines still have not really recovered from the pandemic. So there is a benefit to participating in future upside if you are a Spirit shareholder. It's notable that JetBlue hasn't added a stock component to its offer as well, which raises questions about how their own investors might feel about this transaction. But to your point, I remain somewhat mystified that Frontier has not actually actually raised its offer at any point in this process. They've added the reverse termination fee, which clearly was in response to concerns about shareholders about having some kind of protection, because that deal, of course, is not without its own regulatory risk. But they have yeah. not changed the underlying financial terms in any way, whether to add more stock or to add cash. And I feel like they could make it very easier on themselves and spirit shareholders if they would do something to bridge that gap between JetBlue's offer. Brooke, does the operating environment play any role in what is happening here and will happen going forward in the way that shareholders and management think about this? I've just spent my weekend reading report after report here in Europe about the chaos that is being caused by the way that the industry is set up right now. Can't get the staff at the airports, can't get the staff on board, can't get the aircraft in the right place. That's playing out to a lesser extent in the United States, but it is playing out. How do you think that will affect the, the way that deals, not just this one, but others, go forward? I think that's absolutely a factor, and one of the reasons why you see JetBlue pursuing this as aggressively as it is. I mean, it is very difficult to get new planes right now, uh, especially if you're trying to get Airbus planes. You are at the back of the line for, for several years. Um, but even Boeing has its challenges delivering planes. Um, it's difficult to get staff. It's just very hard to grow right now organically as an airline in this operating environment. And I think JetBlue realizes that. They see Spirit as an easy way to add capacity. Uh, and that, to me, is why they are pursuing this as, as strongly and strenuously as they are.